For this year's Halloween machine, I replaced the monitor with a couple of skull-shaped glass bottles that I hung from the door. By pressing the spacebar on the keyboard I hid behind the table, a tutorial begins, allowing me to explain to the kids how the game works. First off, all skulls will glow in three different colors, each corresponding to a skull on the price table. Pay attention to their order. Then the lights turn off and two skulls will glow at the same time. The color of the two glowing skulls will trade places. In this case the skulls that were green and pink will trade places. And then two of them swap places again. In this case the pink and the blue skulls trade places. After this the tutorial ends. All kids who can buy this year understood the gameplay after the tutorial. Each player is then given a chocolate coin. Placing the coin inside the cauldron hanging from the door starts the game. After the skulls have finished changing places, they light up again, and the player gets to select one. They can pick the skulls they want by knocking on it with their hand, or using a wand that I got for the game. The kids then get the prize for that color. All colors had a fair amount of candy, but the pink one had a big bonus. And that's it for the gameplay. There was a surprisingly large amount of kids trick-or-treating this year, and most of them thought the games was tons of fun. Now on the technical side, the game logic is handled by a Raspberry Pi with a keyboard plugged in. I also added a small screen to it, but that was only for debugging. The LEDs and sensors were hooked up to a small board that I soldered together with an ESP8266 microcontroller and an I2C LED driver. This microcontroller communicated with the Raspberry Pi over Wi-Fi, allowing the Pi to control all the LED colors wirelessly, and also accept all the inputs from the sensors. For the cauldron I used a small strip of NeoPixels that I had uh, left over from when I modded my bicycle. The uh, coin sensor is just a load cell, essentially a digital scale, and it was set to sense weight changes at around 7 grams, which is the average weight of the coins that I was using. Finally, detecting tapping on the skulls was done by taping a small vibration sensor to each of them. That's uh, all for this year. A little bit late, I know, but uh, I hope you enjoy.